I literally only found out I'm interviewing you. I thought you were interviewing me yeah. about growing up gay in the South. <laughs> and so I'm, I am, A, not prepared. Yeah. And B, really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> no, 100%. <laughs> he came and he saw this photo and he screamed. <laughs> I, I threw tea in your face, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Which brings me to my first question, what's the tea? <laughs> <laughs> mm. How are you, AD? I'm actually doing very well. Good. Can yeah. you give it up for AD Bryant? No! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. We have to. They just did that. Did they? Do you guys know John Early? He's the <laughs> <laughs> He's By the way, that was generous, but oh. still less. Okay. Still less. Also, we were backstage when um, we were being introed earlier, yeah. and we both n clocked the applause and. Yeah, and um, the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, Ad, what's up? <laughs> well, I feel like we have a few things just to like address off the top before yeah, yeah. we like get into conversation totally. or whatever. And it's gonna be probing and brutal. Yeah. Get ready. The first would be. John just did Late Night with Seth Meyers, so he's like <laughs> riding very high right now. <laughs> yeah, full face of makeup. <laughs> and do you want to kind of talk about the shirt right now? Sure. Um, I think if I don't talk about it now, that's yeah. all y'all are going to be thinking about. Yeah. And I really want tonight to be about you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm wearing um, a fully sheer helmet Lang. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wore it on Seth Meyers tonight, and it was a huge moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so and, and so that's it. So that's it. Um, or where are you? Have you done press all day? Or are you just doing press? Right I now? have done press today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing press this week and next week, and um, I feel insane when <laughs> I do that. Yeah. And why? I just think it's like. Um, very insane. Well, part of what I think makes it insane is like talking about shrill all day is just like person after person after person being like, so you've been fat and you hated that. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and you're like, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And so that is like kind of a weird experience. Uh, I and, can't imagine. Or like there, there's a lot of questions about like, and so, wow, do the women love you for being fat? <laughs> <laughs> and you're yeah. like, and it's like Juliana Rancic. <laughs> like, oh my God. No, I, I've boycotted she's that amazing, stuff. Yeah, oh, she's amazing. She's amazing. She's actually amazing. No, no, she's one of my best friends. <laughs> Juliana Rancic, she's amazing. <laughs> Quote John Early. <laughs> okay. Wow, oh, we've well. started off toxic. <laughs> Oh God, you know this reminds, I was just about to be like, are there any press here? <laughs> and that reminds me just to immediately change subjects, but I want to get back to that. No, 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 no. Is when I was in acting school, thank you. Um, <laughs> we had a guest class with Richard Dreyfus. Oh. And the first, he came in wearing a sling, and the first thing he said, he was like, if anyone in the press is here, um, get out. <laughs> and I was like, we're 18. <laughs> And like, press? Like, it ain't 72. <laughs> okay, so toxic up top. I know. And all the Absolute, toxicity is coming from me, not Well, even. you're absolutely going hard for Richard Dreyfus and Juliana Rancic. <laughs> the bodies are dropping like flies <laughs> up here. Oh my god. Uh, okay. No, I was gonna ask about the pressing. What's your least favorite euphemism for fat? Mm, god. It's so hard because I feel like actually my true least favorite is when people are like, so you are one of the, uh, of course you're the, <laughs> uh, you're <laughs> big boy. Or like, you know, like they, they just, they panic. Uh, it's like I can see them panicking right. and I want to scream fat in their yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Cause they're just so desperately being like, the chubby sweets, um, <laughs> like just, absolute like digging for for anything that might be the best way to say it um, yeah totally 
and I, and I both feel for them and want to kill them. And of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine press for this show is kind of all, especially in this moment, it's probably all like a lot about, like maybe a little cloyingly earnest, you know, like yeah, yeah. they're probably not talking about the fun, hilarious aspects of Shrill. No. Yeah. It's, it's all um, the rawest hell of it. Oh yeah. God. Do they dig too deep? Um, well, I, f I found that like definitely people are very hungry to know what is real from, from my life. Like, right. And I think maybe that is because people know that I write it and right. like, so they're like, but I, the number one thing is that like people will be like, so that's your mom? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, yeah. it's not, you yeah. know, it's like an amalgamation of every um, writer in our writer's rooms kind of mom or moms or aunts or, you know, it's just like people you encounter. Course. And but then like, you know, whittled down to something that just works in 21 minutes. Yeah, they totally. Ha yeah. Huh. Yeah. Again, that's our time. And, <laughs> um, so what's real, is that your mom? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, by the way, thank you, speaking of your mom, I just, I just wanna thank you for bringing Julia Sweeney back into the conversation. Thank you. I know. Was she a major hero as a kid? It's fine if not. <laughs> you know, I had such an awareness of her, but I felt like I, I, when I got to SNL, I became more like into seeing what the ladies before me had done. And yeah. I really watched oh. when like Molly Shannon and Anna Gasteyer and you know, Sherry like Sherry O'Terry, that was like when we were kind of growing up yeah. and watching. And so when I got- well, I'm, I'm, I'm 21. I know. Okay. <laughs> so just careful. Okay. Okay. 21. <laughs> And I'm 84. <laughs> um, but so I kind of then started to like dig into her and I really just like liked her style. And I, know. And I felt so like good. there was, um, when we were talking about casting that part, it was like, there's some elements where I'm like, there's a sweetness to her face. Yes, totally. And some sharpness to her delivery that I like totally trade in that same world, you know? Me too. And, oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But so I was like, oh, I could kind of buy us as like a pair. Totally, because she's like Midwestern, she's gotta be. Yeah, she's Chicago-y. And where are you from? I'm from Arizona. <laughs> Work! <laughs> yeah, it's actually a pretty bad place. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard of Tent Cities? That was us. <laughs> yeah, we did that to our prisoners. <laughs> Arpaio, he's our guy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, okay, what else, what else, what else? Okay. <laughs> that's so bad, John. I know, I know. It's early, what else, what else, what else? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Um, no, I feel, I feel the pressure of the interview. No, no, no. Like, uh, whatever, I'll be fine. Um, I feel like you guys don't care, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm trying to get to, okay, so Julia Sweeney, Daniel Stern. Yeah, Daniel Stern is a star. So major, yeah. so cool. So I do feel like those are inspired casting choices. Yeah, I mean, we we talked a lot about like, I don't know, casting celebs versus like non-celebs. And I do think there is like a natural authority to someone that you've seen before. And totally. I think, especially for the pilot, like you kind of have a sense of like who they are a little bit and you, you kind of use that totally. in the narrative to like, Get away. And same with like John Cameron Mitchell, like yes. there's like a little bit of air of like, that's John Cameron Mitchell, yeah, yeah. exactly. He's so damn Love good. the hard ass clap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's John, hi. Um, <laughs> uh, wow. Um, was, uh, the questions are flying out. I had some, so prepared. You even saw my paper. I'm just trying not to do you want out to Do you need to get the paper out? No, it was about, was it about John Cameron? Oh, well, John Cameron Mitchell based on Dan Savage, That's right? That's right. Uh, to At some least degree, in yeah. Lindy's book. Yeah, yeah, totally. So that is actually a question I had, was like how much, and I'm sure you're sick of talking about this, but they want to know, I want to know, how much was like, did, like, at what point in the writing process of season one were you like, okay, let, we can kind of detach ourselves a little bit, we don't have to be totally married to it, yeah. or was that always the plan? No, I mean, I think it's interesting because when we pitched the show, the character's name was Lindy. Oh, and wow. like, that is really intense, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, um, and then kind of once we got picked up to series, the more we were working in the writer's room, the more we were like, oh, 
I think using this as like sort of a map or a framework rather than like a Bible is gonna help us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also it's like, especially when we got into casting, it's like these people are different than yes. the real people and you wanna play to your cast strengths. You don't wanna you know? watch people always trying to nudge themselves over. Right, like, and this isn't a biopic. You have to move the jacket from the mic. It's gonna... You mean I have to show more of my shirt? Yeah. But yeah, so we, I mean, we sort of used it as like, I would say there were tentpole things, like she works at an alt weekly, or yeah. she has a boss who's sort of like opinionated, or right. you know, I mean, just some, she had an abortion, you know, right, right. some of those classic fun comedy things <laughs> that we used as sort of like a map, you yeah. know? And then I would say for the second season, it was sort of like, because the first season was only six episodes, it was this um, really simple A line, A storyline, mm -hmm. you know, of like, it's all about Annie. It's Annie from point A to point B. By the end of the season, she has an epiphany about her body. She changes her life and how she wants to approach it. And I think for season two, what we're doing is sort of like leaving the foundation and map behind and like going off into this world and exploring these characters. And there's some really fun, like, I don't know, we really get into Fran this season or we go deeper with John Cameron Mitchell and mm. you know, that's, some of that stuff is like, mm, the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Did you feel like you came away, one of my favorite parts about like writing. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, sorry. Um, maybe my only favorite part because it's mostly hell. Yeah, I, I would say it's dark. Yeah, <laughs> but is like when you like arrive at like a set of rules, you know, you're like where you start to like over a long period of time, I feel like start to like, eat, like uh, tease it. This sucks. Um, <laughs> you start to tease out like your kind of ground rules. Yeah. You know, and you kind of can't be rigid about them at the very beginning. You kind of can't know them until totally. you've got a, So do you have like, can you think of any kind of rules you guys arrived at at the end of the season? Yeah, I mean, we do have some like <laughs> doofy little rules that I think help us, you yeah. know? Um, this is a small and specific one, and I feel like it's definitely in reaction to like my time at SNL. Yeah. But kind of a hard and fast rule is like we don't make like modern pop culture references. So God bless. You. <laughs> and by the way, I didn't even notice it, and that's so nice because I feel like that's I'm always barraged with references. Yeah. In things, and I'm like, I I, I really appreciate that you guys value. Well, I feel like it creates a clear clean cut world yeah. and like so if there is a reference to something from pop culture it's like 70s and before yeah. like there's a later episode where we mentioned like captain and tenille and that's about <laughs> as like wild as we'll go yeah. but i think it does kind of help like give parameters to what you're working on and i feel like at least for us it's like yes you can make a game of thrones joke or whatever but if you think like two seconds longer you might find like a specific detail that's a lot more universal and a lot more um, interesting. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like to to make your point or make your joke or whatever. Totally. Yeah. Any other rule? Mm, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's the only one. Um, <laughs> no, I mean I think we also we have a rule of sort of like even if there's sort of a serious moment, we try to at least break it and yes. like come out of into like a lighter moment or have balance. a character like comment it and be like my ass itches or like you know <laughs> at the end of like what is sort of a tense moment because it just is like that's how real life is yeah. um and it just at least once we get into the edit it's like you're always wishing for that, that something you had, that gets yeah. you out of that like heavy moment um, totally I don't know. Those are my best rules. I, I love them. Okay. Those are so helpful. Yeah, okay. And don't you respect the show more now? I do. Oh. I really do. Um, now, am I supposed? That hurts. To okay. I see what you're. I see now why. Um, I am I supposed to hate Ryan because I'm so horny for him. <laughs> this is. Is this something that you guys struggle with? Well, like, truly, when we get to the Q&A, like, please pop off, because I, I am, like, I am fascinated by how horny people are for him. What? It actually makes me deeply depressed. <laughs> um, and, like... I don't know. 
I mean, like, Luca, I love him yeah. as a performer. He's a wonderful actor, and that so is good. not who he is. He's acting, you know? Yeah. But people go to his Instagram, and they're like, I want you to rail me to death. Like, <laughs> they are so horny for him. I was just joking, and it was just a late night. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it, like, stresses me out that people are vibing on this. But I also think, you know, I kind of love it. Yes. Because to me, that's the whole point of his character is totally. like, why? Why? <laughs> yeah. Why? 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 You know? And like, what is it? Why? Yeah. And, and I think, especially for someone who has felt insecure most mm -hmm. of their life, attention from someone like that feels like the absolute gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. And of course you're creaming into the moon, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's like, I got him. I got him. Yeah. And so I feel like that, to me, is like the thrilling thing in the second season is he actually, she really asks for more and he yeah. really steps up. Um, and not to give any spoilers, but by the end of the season, she does start to question, like, is that enough? Yes, he fucks me great. Yes, he's very tender. Yeah. Yes, he's supportive and he's actually showing up now. He's trying to be a good partner, but is that enough? And mm. I think that that is like the true mark of real confidence is being willing to be like, even though he fulfills like four of the five things I need, I still want more for myself because I think I deserve it, you know? Totally. And ooh, 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 to the tiny snaps. <laughs> but, but I think especially for women who feel like maybe they're not the picture of what works in like dating apps or mm -hmm. whatever, the most terrifying thing is to let go of something that's at least like ticking the boxes totally. and put yourself back out there, you know? Well, one thing that I think is so beautiful about See, um, S2, F1. Oh. Um, it's kind cool. Of industry slang. Really cool. <laughs> um, but is that fireside chat, to quote my good friend FDR. <laughs> um, um, but no, in that little fireside chat, I do feel like that, that's such a profound thing. It's like this thing of when, when you're like, when you've spent a lot of your time, a, a lot of time in your life being insecure and, and finally dating maybe a little later in life, mm -hmm. there is this like, especially for like a self-aware funny person like Annie or like, I don't know, me, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's really scary to suddenly then be so new at something. Yeah. And so I think what's so nice about Ryan is like that he's also kind of like meeting you there a little bit, being like, I've never done this either. Yeah. And like, and I'm really bad, but I want to get better. And so it gives you this really kind of cozy opportunity to like start blank slate. But then it is like after some time, it's like, is this just, is this like, an actual organic relationship, or yeah. is this something that just feels like good to both of you? Yeah, like we need. We're, it's a, a nice opportunity to learn. Yeah, you know. Well, I feel like, at least from a writing point of view, like the purpose of that fireside chat <laughs> was Thank to you. sort of like humanize him again. Yeah. Um, after what we had sort of done in the first season. Yeah, sexualizing and, him. You mean? <laughs> yes. And I mean, it doesn't seem to be bothering the ladies of Instagram. Um, <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, we were definitely trying to sort of like make them hear each other, and and it does sort of go from there. Yeah. Ooh, I'm really excited for you guys to see the season. Like, I hope that after the last episode, you'll call me. <laughs> uh, 618. Oh! Uh, oh, my bad. Uh, <laughs> you five, have five, my five. number memorized. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say, and I I'm really had one. I had them all fired up. Oh, does Connor get mad when you kiss him? Ooh. When you kiss Ryan? That's my husband. <laughs> Um, no, he doesn't get mad. He's yeah. done a set, he did a sex scene on Louis, no. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that. That was before, yeah, it was guys. before. We didn't know. Yeah. Um,
Um, no, he's done a sex scene, so we're equal now. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I don't think it's like his favorite scene yeah. to watch usually. <laughs> And there's a lot more sex in this season. Yeah. Um, but he's cool with it. Yeah, he's he, cool. knows, he knows I'm making art. <laughs> um, and, you know, I also think it's like, to me, there were moments where I was like, do I really need to do this? Do I need to get my ass out? Right. Um, but I do. It's, yeah. it get is, that ass it's like, out. Sorry. Yeah. Like, you can't have a story about a woman who is grappling with her body and not involve sex. And for me, I just felt like growing up, I always watched TV. And if there was a fat female character engaging sexually in any way, it was like her seeing a man across the room, running across to him, jumping on him. She flattens him like a pancake. And, <laughs> and that's like sex, I guess. And I was always like, this sucks. Like, yeah. I, this hurts my feelings. Yeah. And it's not reality. I was getting mine. <laughs> um, and, and so I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, I want to, you know, I want to show someone fat on screen with some dignity, you know? Yeah, hell yeah. And like, oh, thanks. <laughs> but like, yeah. It's really true. I like that you said, it is about uh, a fat woman grappling with her body. And because I feel like there is this pressure that I'm sure you felt, seeing that there are not that many shows with fat women as the lead. You know, it's like this pressure of representation in like, especially TV right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. where it's like, there's almost equal pressure to either do the show where it's like, she's fat, but, it's not about that. <laughs> yeah. You know, which like, you know. It's yeah, like, she's actually normal. Yeah. <laughs> she's fat, but she has friends. <laughs> you know. She can even read. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But like, it's but like, when how how can you be a fat woman in America in this world today and not? you're constantly forced to think about your body and yeah. to think about how you're different from other people and to think about how people are viewing you. You know, it's like, it would be so strange and dishonest, I would imagine, to like swallow that. It's like the, it's like the thing, the pressure that I feel like women comedians, or even I get, I feel like, as like a gay comedian, mm -hmm. to like this thing of like, if you talk, if a woman talks on stage about having her period, it's like, why is she always talking about women's stuff? Yeah. <laughs> But, it, but it's like, and it, so it's, which implied in that is that when men are talking about having sex, that's not male, that's universal. Totally. You know, but if a woman talks about anything in her daily life, it's like, you know, and, and then also if, yeah, if you are a kind of underrepresented, maybe marginalized person in this world, like, it's so much of your experience, yeah. you know, so it's like, I, I wonder if you, I mean, I, since the sor source material was shrill, I mean, yeah. like, you probably, there was never any conversation about that, but w was there any conversation about that? Well, you know, I, I, there was never a world where we were gonna like not talk about it. Yeah. It was definitely like, it was part of what was important to us about the show. And yes. it feels like in a lot of ways, it's the reason to make it, you know, yeah. like why make it? Um, and I feel like, you know, at least for me, at that point when I was like, before I knew what Shrill was and we were like talking about doing it. I had been on SNL for a while. Mm -hmm. and Sorry, what, what's SNL? It's, 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 um, it's um, <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and <laughs> but I had been on the show for a while and I was getting offers. And I was like, ooh, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> what's next for me? <laughs> and, and I... But I'll say that like these were roles that were sort of like rom com -y roles, mm -hmm. and it was sort of like this doofy girl yeah. it never has a boyfriend, and she always drops her pins <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, but she gets you know struck by lightning, <laughs> and she suddenly like this is a real one. She suddenly can. It wasn't struck by lightning, but it was like. She is so amazing at giving massages that um, guys come from them. 
And so even though they won't date her, they will go um, get massages. <laughs> And so, as you can imagine, I was thrilled. Um, but to me, it wasn't written as a fat character, you yeah. know? But I'm a fat woman. Yeah. And when I play that role, you're, you are saying that, like, this is a fat woman who can't get a date because, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, you just automatically, it takes on this other thing. Well, and do you think they, they write these characters with fat women in mind? And then they're like, and then they're like, oh, this feels rude in the, like, breakdown or in the stage directions to say that? Because that, to me, feels like a, the, this, big, the, bizarro archetype of like big broad comedies yeah. from the past like 400 years. Yes, totally. This film's been around for that long. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but like, but yeah, the like the, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's, I don't know. It's always like the fat but, woman's like in a sling or something. It's like, yes. oh, it's, it's so bizarre. And I don't know if it was written for a fat woman, but I know that it made me feel like shit. Yeah. And, and I felt like in some ways by not like acknowledging the fatness, yeah. you are almost saying more. Totally. In like a really cruel way. Yeah. And so I definitely was feeling the desire to like get into the driver's seat and take my stuff to the city. Like I just <laughs> was like, I want to be in control of how this is written and how this is presented. And, and you know, just like what I was just saying of like make sure that sex is approached in a way that feels real mm -hmm. or you know any kind of relationship and that still acknowledges it but also can move past it and i do feel like in the second season it's like it's there there yeah. are moments where it's a part of her life but it's not all the time well and grappling with it in the way that she did in season one is what kind of launches her into season two like yeah. she wouldn't be the person she is in the first episode of season two Completely. which i love like the full release and i feel like you know, what part of what we're showing in the first season and what, oh, oh my God. Okay, that's really fucked. That, I felt <laughs> unsafe. <laughs> Guys, that can't happen again. <laughs> I'm sorry, AD. I'm really sorry, because this no. is your night. Thank you. This is my quinceanera. I've been fired, I've been fired. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, keep going, it was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> no, what I was just gonna say was that basically, you know, at least for myself, I spent probably 20 years of my life with a constant loop in my head being like, don't sit a certain way mm -hmm. so that you don't look fat or sit up straight or don't order a hamburger, order a salad so people don't think you're like a fat hamburger eating lady. <laughs> like, and it was just haunts, constantly hunting and, and working so hard to deny my human existence and to camouflage it. And I was working so hard all day, yeah. no matter what I was doing. And it was completely unconscious. Yeah. I wasn't even aware that I was doing it. It was just the way that I lived. And I kind of reached a point where I was just like, I actually can't do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a waste of my time. Yes. And it's a waste of my mind. And I want to do things with my talents yes. and not be consumed by like the size of my thigh, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just was like, fuck it, I have to start like letting go of some of this shit. And it's really hard, yeah. you know? It's, it's not a natural thing to do. But it, it changed my life drastically. And Lindy had the exact same experience. And there are many women who have. And it just releases you from so much like pain and suffering and self-loathing mm -hmm. that like you can start to approach your own <laughs> worth in a different way. That is so beautiful. That's so gorgeous. <laughs> It is, it is. I feel like he pressured you to clap. I know, I know, I turned, that is so beautiful. No, okay. um, but I, I was gonna, there is such a beautiful monologue in season two, I feel like about this, about time, and all the time you've spent consumed with these thoughts, again, the shirt. Um, and it reminded me of this Margaret Cho joke that I used to be obsessed with. She was like my idol when I was in middle school and high school. And she has a joke about this where she's like, she's like, I've started to realize like how many, how much time I've spent stopping 
at, at you know shop windows and looking at my reflection and shop windows and like, <laughs> it's like added up to so much time and she's like what if I just didn't do that? What if I stopped doing that? She goes, I could take a pottery class. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is so genius. No, it's true. Yeah, and you, because you don't, you just, because if you're born into a world where like the culture is not mirroring you yes. in any way and making you feel like comfortable in your own skin because you've seen nothing. That, that's another thing I want to talk about is mirroring. <laughs> And then I think we have to go to questions. Oh. Now it says time for audience questions, 15 minutes. Does that mean in 15 minutes? <laughs> or 15 minutes of audience, audience questions? Audience questions. It's, it's the second version. It's the second, no, 12. good, 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 because I want it to stop. <laughs> um, the last thing we'll talk about before we open up to you guys um, <laughs> is, uh, it, but is this thing of mirroring of like, I, there's so much talk right now about like, representation in media and like it's such an important long overdue conversation but it's also immediately been absorbed by capitalism oh <laughs> you know yeah. it's, so it's like so then you start to see like nike commercials so they're like representation matters yes and you're like <laughs> yes yes you know yes, it, and totally. it's so confusing yes well, I mean, I will say we have an entire episode about that this season. I cannot this wait. This episode, look out for it. And um, Let's do an episode. And, you know, it's tricky. Yeah. It's definitely tricky because I want to make this show. Yeah. But there are moments, certainly, where I'm like, is this okay? You know? Like, is what okay? <laughs> to, you know, I mean, to, we're marketing a show. Oh. That is like, you know, a partially about marketing feminism or partially yeah. about marketing like body positivity. Yeah. And and to me, those are two things that are like who I am and totally. what I believe in. But I would hate to feel like I'm like commodifying them so that you can buy a backpack with <laughs> my face on it. You know? And and Well so, it doesn't feel like that at well, all. I, I know, but it's just something yeah. I'm conscious of, you know. Yeah, and, of course. And good. And and that's kind of what we get into this sixth episode, basically. Yeah, but I'm you know, so it, it's complicated because, and this is what we talk about in the episode. But like, as much as I can sometimes cringe when I see like hashtag girl go power boss <laughs> queen all yeah. queens in the boardroom yeah. or whatever. <laughs> like, I'm also conscious of like who I was in Arizona. Exactly. When I didn't have like as much of like a savvy or a New York, like it, the ability to come to like a place like this and listen to people talk. And so that stuff really did reach to me and it made a difference. Totally. And, and so it's hard to like poo poo people for needing that stuff when it does help some women who may not be as, I don't know, plugged into like all the think pieces that we're reading. Exactly. You know, so it's complicated, and I, I feel very aware of both parts of it. Yeah, it's, it's really easy to be cynical or suspicious of that stuff, but it is, I was gonna say, it's like, I, I, I struggle with that a lot, too, in the stuff that I, like, try to make. Mm, never happened. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, but, like, representation, because of the fact of like, of mirroring is real. Like mirroring is like a concept in like therapy that I've been yeah. obsessed with recently where I'm like, where my therapist will be like, well that's because he or you, you know, weren't mirrored as a child. I'm like, what? But it is, it's like you, as a kid, you have emotions, you, you were like, you're hungry or you're sad. And then like your parent is like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, they, they reflect back what you're doing and then it helps you understand your own experience. And mm -hmm. it's like, and kind of as I've, explored that in therapy, I've also been thinking about that with art and, yeah. and how much I was so at sea with any sort of like gay representation and like how it, it just, it, it is actually important. It's yeah. just like undeniably important. Totally. And, and, and so it is, I, I'm so happy that you're A, in a healthy way suspicious of like <laughs> the commodification of these things, but also pushing through that and like for the girls in Arizona. Well, and all I can do is like write what I know, you yeah, know? Yeah. That's totally. all I can do, so. Totally. Uh, and so we turn to you for your question. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, did I force that on you? What? Did I force the <laughs> Um. So they're going to put microphones down here. And um, so. And feel I guess free to sing. 
Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. This is a competition. <laughs> um, and I have the power, just based on vibe alone, to veto your question. Oh, this no. This is such a beautiful auditorium. Oh, wow. Give it up for the 92nd Street Y. Woo! Woo! This side really showing up for the question. <laughs> I know. Where's this side? Wow. Hi. What's up? Um, so I noticed you wear a lot of adorable dresses in the show. And I'm wondering, are you wearing bike shorts? Like, what's your preferred anti-chafing mechanism? Oh. Yes. I have been wanting this question. I will tell you that, one, we addressed the chub rub in this season, second oh season two. God. I've been, it felt like you were avoiding it. I'm so No, no. I, I, uh, we do address. And um, <laughs> I can promise you there's an addressing. Um, and I wear, basically, I wear like little shorts, mostly so they can put my mic pack on there, you know, because I don't want to put it on my titty holder. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I wear little shorts under there. Great, thank you. Bike? They're, like, like I, I, they're not bike shorts. Yeah. They're sort of a flesh tone. I'm not a spank, though, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to look into the brand yeah, name. Yeah. I will get back to you on this. Thank you. I think that, do we go every other? Oh, uh, let's go every other, yeah. and then I guess after her. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Okay. You. I, I honestly didn't think I would get the chance to speak. I thought I'd have to, like, claw my way up here. <laughs> well, there's a bunch of cowards in the crowd tonight. <laughs> So I was lucky enough to be able to go to Portland a few months back with one of my best friends who's here tonight. Oh. And um, there was the scene in the first season where you went to the pool party, but before the pool party, you were at the, the famous Rose Garden. Yeah. And I went to the Rose Garden, walking where you've walked, feeling special. Oh. But I, there was no pool there. Where was that pool? That's movie magic, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you see is real. Um, <laughs> No, the pool was at, well, also, like, in Portland, they basically don't have pools. I didn't see any pools. Raining. So, if, truly, for days, like, our production designer was like, there's no pools! <laughs> um, but we had to literally drive, like, an hour and a half outside of Portland to some, like, country club where they did have a pool. And I will get you the location on that. <laughs> okay, stand next to them, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um. Hi. Um, Hi. In season one, Annie is really very clothed. She wears things that are a little looser. She's not totally body confident. But in one of the later episodes, you're, you finally like take off your bra. And obviously, that you don't show anything. But um, <laughs> I was in the second season, you see that moment where she walks in with uh, the, the bra with the, the hearts on it. Yeah. And, oh, it's and incredible, by the way. <laughs> Such a good look. And uh, also, you recently did an amazing sketch on SNL that was cut for time where you embraced your inner Lizzo. Yes. So, yeah. So that's all to say, uh, in your journey of confidence, where are you on the scale of like season one beginning Annie to Lizzo? Yeah. I think I'm full Lizzo at this point. I mean, only, <laughs> only in that like, you know, when I'll never show my nips on screen, <laughs> mostly for my parents. <clears throat> Um, I'm not that uh, there yet. Okay. But, <laughs> but you know, I mean, th that was very conscious. We were trying to tell Annie's story, and that wasn't necessarily like my comfort level, if that makes sense. Um, but you know, when I do those sex scenes, I'm often surrounded by close to 45 people, and I'm in just underwear and. Yeah. I'll tell you, there were moments where I was like, can I do this? Can I really do this? Not even putting it on screen for you people, but that, stand yeah. in a room. Like, imagine being in a room like this and just wearing only underwear, no top. I mean, you have like pasties on, but it's unreal. Yeah. Okay? And, and I'll tell you, I often, before I went out there, would listen to like Ariana Grande and just be like, I'm the hottest woman in the universe. Yeah, yeah. And like, I can do this, you know? And it, then I would get out there and it would be like, fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, it's really lining up. Go, go. Sorry, um, AD, I love you. I know this is your night, but this is a question for John. <gasps> so, I'm so. <laughs> 
This is huge. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I don't want to put you on the spot. Oh, no. But I loved your impression of Steve from <laughs> Sex and the City. And I was, wa- <laughs> I was just wondering if you could do that impression. But if you can't, like, I understand. Well, I'll do it really fast. I'll do it really fast. And I, it if you didn't hear, she loves his impression of Steve from Sex and the City. And by the way, I And let me just say, I also do, and I have also pimped John into doing it, so this is, you've actually given me a gift. Oh, well, to also bring it back to 80, I just wanna say that I literally made a tape for SNL like four years ago, which was still a solid 12 years after Sex and the City had ended. <laughs> and my only impression was a minor character on Sex and the City. <laughs> and I was like, why did I not get it? Okay, um, here's Steve, okay. I love you, Miranda. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. (laughs) Hi there, huge fan. Um, So kind of a broader question, um, but working with other comics like uh, Kumail Nanjiani, Bo Burnham in film and watching them create their own work. Uh, what did you learn from them to apply to your own projects? Like yeah, I mean, a lot, definitely. I feel like I was really lucky in that kind of right before I got into the process of working right. on Shrill, I you know, worked on Girls, I worked on uh, The Big Sick, I worked on I Feel Pretty, and I got to see sort of like Kumail, Amy Schumer, Bo Burnham, um, a lot of these people kind of like driving their own destiny a little Mm -hmm. bit. And pretty quickly I was like, oh, they're not just like doing comedy, they're producers. They're in there talking about like all of the decision making. And that's really what we do with Shrill too. And and that was kind of for, and you know, for me, I'm so often like if someone's like, hey, you know, we've got a problem. I'm like, well then whatever you wanna do (laughs) is fine and I'm stupid and (laughs) thank you for even looking at me. And (laughs) I think maybe the best thing that ever happened to me was getting this show because it forced me to actually uh, communicate directly with people that I worked with and not like soften myself Mm -hmm. and, and just be straightforward because we had to get the work done, you know? And I really learned that from working with all those people. It's had a huge, huge impact. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's so nice. Hi, uh, my name is Rebecca, and Hi. congratulations on your I can't believe it's your eighth season. And oh, then I was like, oh, okay. And then yeah, I'm on this show. I'm with us actually the same age. Oh, we're young. <laughs> so young. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, and I and I do appreciate. <laughs> and I do appreciate that the. It, Watching the show just feels very real, just even the conversations with like you and Fran and you and your parents, just like, oh, that's like a real Thank conversation you. humans have. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, so I was wondering what your goals were like going into this season, like obviously fleshing, you get time to flesh out other characters. And then also what do you, what do you hope people take away from this season? Yeah, um, you know, I feel like my goals were sort of just to, uh, do what we did in the first season, but do it better. <laughs> and and I would say less so in the writing, but more so in what I was just talking about of like, I wanted to get better at being a boss, you know? Uh, sorry, hashtag girl boss. <laughs> but like, no, literally but, a boss. But I literally <laughs> do help run the show and people report to me. And I think, you know, sometimes people would come to me and say, I've made a mistake. and this season I got much better at being like, great, thank you for acknowledging your mistake and going forward, here's how we can do better mm. and I, I love working with you and, and we're actually still fine. And I think before, my, the people pleaser in me, that would have destroyed me. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have for days been like, this person hates me right. and I, I was mean to them, I hope they didn't think I was mean. Right. What a nightmare. And what you, th- what you hope people take away. Yeah, and what I hope people take away is, uh, I just, it means so much to me when people say that like they see themselves in any part of this show, and, and that means a lot. And again, I really want you to talk to me when you get to the last episode of this season. I just, I feel like I don't want to give any spoilers, but that's the takeaway. Ooh. Thank you. Hi. Um, I should say really quickly, this, these are the last questions. Okay. Hey. Oh. Come on, come on down. Oh. 
Just you. <laughs> wow. And that's it. That's it. Okay, sorry. No, no problem. Um, I am also a creator sort of trying to make things happen. Um, and I'm wondering how, as someone who occupies a lot of different jobs on a set or in your life as actor, writer, producer, how you toggle between those things working on the same project. Yeah, it's hard. Um, and I've definitely had to get better at setting boundaries with people because there were definitely times where like, I'm about to shoot a sex scene and someone's coming to my trailer being like, hey, do you wanna look at the posters we might put up at the club or whatever? <laughs> do you approve of these posters? And I'm like, cool, I'm trying to think about my personal vagina and <laughs> how, how someone is about to like tape a little contraption to cover it over me. And, um, but I want to do both, but I think part of it is, um, for me, it was really being able to trust the people that I work with and, and, and also just really taking it one minute at a time. So there were days where, and you know, still I work often an eight hour day on Shrill and sometimes a 15 hour day at SNL overlapping, if that makes sense. So in order to do that, I have to truly take it a minute at a time. So I can answer two shrill emails, then I'll rehearse a sketch for 25 minutes, and then I'll go to my room and I'll take a call about marketing the show. And it's just, it's sort of just a minute. And then somewhere in there, I'm like, I'm gonna call my mom and I'm gonna go to sleep, you know? And it's <laughs> That just, doesn't happen. No. Yeah. But it is, it's just trying to sort of focus on what you can at the moment. Great. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, so I feel like with the type of career you have, it's a lot of advocating for yourself. You know, like nobody's going to hand you these opportunities. You sort of have to make them on your own. And when it came to creating Shrill and also just, I guess, your venture into the comedy space as a whole, were you ever scared to start even, I guess, trying? And if you were, how, what did you tell yourself to get over that hurdle? Yeah, that's such a good question. Um, yeah, I'm, I've always been scared of everything, forever. <laughs> um, and that's a hard thing to do, but you know, I feel like uh, when I first started in comedy, I always found relief like on stage. Like, it just felt fun to me and it never felt like work. Mm -hmm. And especially even those early shows, I was like, this is fun. And uh, I try to just like carry that into everything. So even at SNL, it's like, my best sketches are when I'm just having fun with my friends. And it's funny, I, I was just thinking about this the other day about like when I feel nervous or when I feel scared. Something that I say to myself a lot, not quite a mantra, but it is definitely something that like, when I'm nervous, I'm like, you know how to do this. You know how to do this. And I'll kind of say that <laughs> like a psycho in my head. But it, it helps, you know, because sometimes when I think about stepping out for SNL and what I'm about to do, I'm scared. But I'm like, you did seven years of shows in Chicago for often people who were eating chicken tenders and didn't want to watch you. <laughs> and you made it through that and you're better for it. You know how to do this, you know? And, and that helps me. Awesome, thank totally. you so much. Yeah. Okay, we gotta keep these last ones quick, y'all. Yeah, I'll make my answers quick. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ariel, nice to Hi. meet you. Um, so in the episode, you started singing Celine Dion. Yes. And uh, on stage that. tonight, you've kind of been doing like this Kristen wig, like don't make oh. me sing, you yes. know? Yes, of course. Um, I'm known for this. So <laughs> impersonating Kristen. If you had a, a musical episode, what would be some titles of the songs and who would be your guest cameos? Oh, wow. Certainly not me. Oh. Toxic. <laughs> um, wow, that's huge. Yeah, um, I love music, and I guess maybe the number one song from the episode would be uh, I'm a Big Fat Bitch and I'm Having the Time of My Life. <laughs> um, and, you know, the cameo is great. Well, let's get Celine in there for real. And yeah, John. Thank John, you. those are the two. I was going to say the Celine moment. It, it's so funny and free, but I was like, she has the notes. Oh! <laughs> I was well. like, she's not backing off of any of the notes. Well, let's just say I wasn't in Phoenix Girls Choir for nothing. <laughs> um, okay, yes. Hi. 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 
Um, I actually have a question for John. Yes! Um, but Is I the Steve impression again? I'm like, <laughs> I'll do it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do just want to clarify that I love you, and I think you'll never understand what this representation means to oh. me, and I really appreciate it. Thank also, you your so husband's much. hilarious. Oh! Yeah, and You're hot. telling me, honey. <laughs> Um, are we gonna get another season of Search Party, or like? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, two more on HBO Max. Yay! Thank God. I know it's it's all it's gotten very kind of lost in the um, the streaming wars, as I like to call it. But if you haven't seen Search Party, you must. It is my favorite show, and oh. John is so incredible on it. That's so nice. And like Shrill, it starts with an S. Something. Um, so my question is for both of you. Mm. Um, I just wanted to know how you first got the confidence when you started in comedy and how that really uplifted you. And was there anything or anyone who really inspired you? Oh, gosh. Well, really similar to what you were just saying, I feel like I, it was about creating fun environments, creating my own environment in which to perform, you know, not going to hostile open mics where it was mostly just straight men, you know, mm -hmm. where, and, and the other comedians were the only people in the audience, you know, it's like, they, the comedians were never hostile to me, I want to be clear, but it's like, it's like a nervous, you know, it's not your environment. space. It's not yeah. my space. And so I just immediately started hosting my own shows and finding bars to do shows in, putting, filling the lineups with my friends inviting my own friends. And it, it, there's, there's this weird kind of comedy narrative of like, you gotta struggle. Mm -hmm. You gotta get up, you gotta do those open mics. It's like, or you don't have to. You can like, you know, it's hard. I'm not saying it's not hard, but like you can create, most people are better performers when they're having fun. Totally. <laughs> and, it's, and there's like some warmth in the room, you know? So you can actively try to create that environment instead of like needing to suffer just so you sound cooler on Mark Maron in 40 years, you know? <laughs> I, I agree 100% with John and very similarly like when I was in Chicago I was one woman on a team of 10 men and I was like this is not my scene and I really quickly found a group of uh, like an all-female team and I was like this is fucking fun yeah so <laughs> yeah it's the same it's like make make it so that you can be comfortable and do your damn thing yeah yeah thank you so much. yeah thanks. thank you Woo. Um, so what was it like to do those scenes with Beck, to like yell those things at each other? Like, I can't. Really <laughs> fun. <laughs> no, I mean, so Beck is so funny, but he's also someone who I really trust and, and who I know really well and who I love. And, um, and so it felt easy, you know? And like, I remember that people on the street were like, uh, some of the crew was like, whoa, he's calling her a fat bitch cow pig <laughs> cunt or whatever and I like in between takes was like laughing so hard I was crying because I was just like loving it it was really fun and and I just I think he's so funny and wonderful so good. yeah final question uh, there is no pressure I'm not kidding well I want to start and end by saying thank you so much for being here I'm such a oh, huge fan you. and this is so exciting to see you Anyway, um, I hope this isn't too repetitive, but I feel like a lot of these questions are asking about your confidence in your comedy or your work. Um, but how did you do that personally? You talked a bit about how like you've developed this ability to be uber confident and you're on you're up there with Lizzo. Can you talk to us just about techniques we can or things that you've learned, people that you've looked to, talks you've listened to about um, body confidence and confidence in your own self personally? Yeah, totally. I mean, what a great question to end on, I think. Um, something practical. Yeah, something practical. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. No, you know, it's hard. And I, I shouldn't act like I know how to do it every day of my life, because I have low days, of course. Um, but I do think just trying to be kinder to yourself, when you start to go down a line of thinking that is really brutal, you have to ask yourself, would I ever speak to anyone else this way? Yes. No, you probably wouldn't. And so that's a good, you're toxic though. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah. that's, that's a really nice barometer, I think, you know? And the other thing that I can say that really helped me a lot 
was, you know, in the early 2000s or whenever it was, I found all these blogs and tumblers and whatever, which now I feel like is not a thing anymore, <laughs> but, but. No, there's just no porn on Tumblr now. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's why I don't think it's a thing. <laughs> but I found all these blogs of fat women who were dressing cool and they were like fashion blogs and I was like, this is inspiring to me. But looking at images of women who looked like me, it made me feel like that's normal and that's good and you can feel normal and good. And it's a really, it's really what we were talking about earlier about representation. It's like go to Instagram and find people who are like your vibe mm -hmm. and look at them and look at how beautiful they are or look at how much they're, they're living their life or whatever and, and know that it's possible for you too. I mean, that's really the gist of it, I think. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. You guys. You guys, that's it. That's it. <laughs> you guys, give it up for Amy Bryant. Yeah, give it up for John. I love you. Here, and wait, please. we'll give you one chance yeah, one to take the picture. Take the picture.